So I know that there's a lot of Bible believers online who are probably lonely. They don't have a Bible believing church to go to or they don't know what it's like in the outside world. So this teaching is for you, which is going to be important. All right, let's start off with Genesis chapter 2. First of all, you got to understand this. God, God's intention was man to not be alone. Okay, it's not good. Look at Genesis chapter 2, and we will read verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Okay, so what's important to understand, as we all live alone in our world, it's not good for man to be alone. When you're all alone, uh, as Bob Jones Sr. said, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. When you're all alone, especially where it's idle, that gives plenty of time for thoughts to run in your mind. Yeah. And who attacks your mind? It's Satan and the devils, right? 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Gives a lot of time for them. And what happens is that it builds up a lot of depression. It builds up a lot of uh, complaining attitudes. And all of this, also it builds up a stage where you're very awkward. You lose confidence. And not only that, where you become awkward, where you lose confidence, it also gets rid of an important thing that's important as a Bible believer. It's faithfulness, staying faithful to God's work. Now, some of you are doing fine being alone and you don't have these symptoms. I'm not talking about you. Good for you. There are Bible-believing Christians out there who I can't imagine, and I went through that a little bit in my life too. I can't imagine how they were able to keep pressing on for God by themselves, and that's been often. But you're going to find out when you read a lot of these Bible-believing heroes that you heard about, when you read their diary, one of the most common complaints and the hardest things they went through is not just suffering, but you'll see loneliness, guarantee. It's always loneliness. So when these signs show up, it's not a good thing. So I want to give you some tips on how to handle loneliness. First of all, you understand that wasn't God's intention, all right? God's intention is for you not to be alone. So that's why go to Hebrews 10, 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And I don't like it when there are some people out there or self-righteous so-called Bible believers who attack this verse saying, oh, we don't believe in church and church and stuff like that. And No, it's important that you have this gathering together Amen. and not just online. I mean actual real-life people. You need that. Okay, so here are some things that can help you. First of all is this. Go to church. Amen. All right? That's the best advice ever to solve loneliness. That's the best advice is Hebrews 10.25. Of course, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is perfect, but trust me, is you need people around you to at least give you a 20% of spiritualness if 80% is something fleshy and even wrong, okay? You need some sort of spiritual juice from somebody. And you add one person plus another person plus another person, it helps you a little bit more, okay? You really need to gather. God commanded that. It's a command, actually not an option. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Notice when you come to church, it's exhorting one another. See that? It encourages each other. Uh, it helped me many times as a pastor. I know that, um, you know, that in church, you know, we might have a spiritually weaker people, but I'm going to tell you the honest truth. It doesn't matter how much spiritually advanced I am more than you. I can't tell you how much of a blessing it is when I have a couple Christians in the church and that keeps your pastor going throughout the rest of the week. Really does. Even one person. It really does. It really does. It's truly encouraging. So go to church. Now, a lot of you online are saying, well, there's no Bible-believing church near me. What I'd recommend is this, is that I always recommended this to people. Go to our resources link, please, okay? Go to our resources link, and you'll see a church directory there. Click on that church directory, and you'll find a Bible-believing church. And if that doesn't work, then uh, just throw in a comment or email me. And I always respond to those people about where to go. 
Uh, if I haven't yet with some of you, then it's by chance, a good chance I may have missed the email because there's a large volume. So please feel free to comment on this video or send me an email. So that's why we're online. That's why we're here for you. See, the Lord set our online ministry out there because there aren't other Bible-believing ministries doing that. So we're the one trying to do it for you, reach it out for you and get you involved with the church, all right? So contact us. All right, the second point is Mark chapter 1. Go to Mark chapter 1. Mark 1. We will read verse 35, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Now, this one's a very important point. Take advantage of your loneliness now, okay? You got to learn to take advantage of your loneliness. Sometimes loneliness can be a better thing for you, you got to understand. Because look at Mark chapter 1, verse 35. The reason why is this. The best way to have fellowship with God is isolation. There's nothing better with a closer walk with God than you shut off all the dumb internet noise, shut off that technology, shut off all your chats and the people, turn off that cell phone so you don't talk to anybody, uh, isolate yourself from people around you from sin, just go yourself in your own spiritual closet, so to speak, and just open up the King James Bible right, right in front of your lap, and that's the best fellowship you'll ever have, is isolation with God, total isolation with God, without distractions. That's the best thing you can ever have. I, my best advice is if you know a park or a nice location that's nearby you, go to that spot and look at God's creation and open up the Bible and read His Word and spend some time in between like talking to Him too. That is the most beautiful thing, the best thing you can ever have. Look at Mark chapter 1, verse 35. The Bible says right here, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out, Jesus went out, and departed into where? A solitary place. Why did he do that? And there prayed. So he can finally talk to God in isolation. Because look at verse 34. He was so busy with people. Look at verse 36. After his isolation with God, he was again busy with people, okay? So the best time is that you get isolated from everybody and just talk to the Lord. And trust me, your relationship with God increases when there's no distractions from the world. Do you ever know why, did you ever notice why Buddhist monks and Catholics monks, they emphasize this isolation solitary thing? because they believe that kind of isolation would get them closer to their God, see? That's why they get really holy-minded, so to speak. But unfortunately, it's for the wrong way, and they got a wrong belief, and they also have a wrong salvation. So they do it all wrong. But you Christians have it all right, so you got an advantage right there. Now go to Proverbs 18, Proverbs chapter 18. I can't tell you enough that isolation is very important for your communion with God. It's really the best thing you can ever experience. Uh, it's truly that song, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. You know why? It's all by yourself. I come to the garden alone. And then I love that third verse where it says, God says, but he bids me go through a voice of woe. Even though I want to stay in the garden longer with him, but God says, no, you got to go. You know why? There are souls to get saved. We got a fellowship with the brethren in the church, see? But see, I want you to understand that's how important your isolation is. So don't think of it as discouragement. Okay, Proverbs 18, verse 24. Now, this is just common sense, too. A man that hath friends must show himself what? Friendly. Okay, now, this is uh, common sense that even lost people know. The reason why you don't have friends is you're not friendly. Now, you got to understand this, is that what's really unfortunate is that i never seen uh, people who cause fights and fusses more about, and nitpicky about stupid things than people who grow more knowledge in the Word, see? Because you're always picking something to fight with. And when you do that, that's not showing yourself friendly, and you don't have any friends. You know how, trust me, when you're living right for God, they'll leave you. 
You don't have to leave them. You don't have to start the fight. You don't have to act like the jerk, okay? Let them be the one causing the separation. Let God be the one. You don't have to be the one, all right? In the meantime, you be friendly, okay? And that means everybody, including lost people. Now, you might say, why is that, Pastor? I thought there's supposed to be separation. Separation when it comes to wrong influence and it, when it comes to uh, wrong doctrine. Those two things, sin and doctrine, where they influence you, you're supposed to separate. But other than that, you're supposed to stay with them so you can lead them to Christ. And I showed you verses on that a long time ago in videos. Luke, I mean, uh, Jesus Christ, he hang around with publicans and sinners so that he can lead them to Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul even said, if a lost sinner bids you go to a feast, go with them as long as it's done for the glory of God. See, as long as it's not sin or wrong doctrine that influences you, be friendly with as many people as possible, all right? I would go even these big family meetings, all right? And, I'm, and you know, I get a good time, you know? Sometimes my family members will... Well, they'll show me off, you know, MIT, Harvard, and stuff like that. I think that's kind of trying to pressure me to go. Maybe that's why. But, you know, I'll have a good time with them, and then we hang around with family members. I catch up with my cousins and all that. And nearly all of them, nearly all of them are lost people drinking. I'm like one, the only one that's drinking water. See that? But see, I'm not, uh, the thing is, you got to make friends. There are people around you, and apostate Christians too, even apostate Christians, but trust me, you could use some communication and good times and game and fun and eating out, okay? You need that. You need that. Because how else can you lead them to Christ, right? What are you going to do? How are you going to sneak them by believing truth, right? How are you going to be a testimony where they can see you and maybe they can become a Bible believer like you, right? So this is important. Be friendly. Well, you know, I'm just not that type of person. That's why you have no friends. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Look, I, I got to tell you this. I am a goofball and awkward too, and I'm very shy. I know that's hard to believe. But you know why that's hard to believe now? Because I worked on being friendly. And guess what? I made a lot of mistakes, and I'm a goofy guy. I would look like the clumsy person. But when, the more and more I talked with people and communicated, it also caught me off that awkwardness and made me kind of learn about common sense now on how to deal with people. Amen. And actually that becomes very important to do better in soul winning, you see that? That becomes better to even teach the Bible, see? Because you know what playing field they're at. Why else did some of you watch me online when I came across really thorough arguments on something? Because I dealt with those kind of people, see? Okay, so uh, in order to not suffer loneliness, that's why these uh, three things are very important. And the fourth thing, which is going to be important concerning about isolation, it's not just fellowship with God. It's not just uh, uh, you got to make sure that you spend time in the church so you don't go alone. Make sure that you become friendly with other people too. But a fourth thing is this. A fourth thing that you understand concerning isolation is that when you are isolated by yourself, you should spend that time to take advantage. Now that's very important. Now what do I mean by taking advantage? The Bible says, um, we'll turn over there, we'll turn over there. So we'll look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy 6. I wasn't going to turn there, but might as well. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. And then we'll look at verse 17. Verse 17. Notice the last part. But in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So you got to realize this. It doesn't matter who you are. God has given you everything in this world and in this life to enjoy. Now just because you're isolated, that doesn't mean that you're bored. Just because you're isolated doesn't mean that you're sad and depressed. Just because you're isolated doesn't mean that you face the most pain in your life. During your isolation, you should take advantage, stop and think, and use your head on what you can do during that isolated time on what you can do to give you joy, what you can do to accomplish things for God, what you can do to even improve your own personal life. See, 
the more time that you use that, use that isolation, see, as an advantage, not as a disadvantage. So take up a hobby, play music, draw. Maybe that's how you can become an artist eventually and make money. That, maybe that's why you can make beautiful music eventually. Take that time to study more of the Bible. Take that time to uh, not watch the internet, but watch our videos and increase more in knowledge of the Bible, see? See, isolation can be a benefit compared to being busy with people. And trust me, when you have a wife and children, you become even more and more preoccupied spending time with them. And that's why Paul said it's better to be alone in the ministry, 1 Corinthians 7. Why? Isolation has sometimes better benefits than uh, being around people. So you got to realize this. Isolation and companionship both have pros and cons. But you think isolation is only cons, that's why you're miserable. Take advantage of using it as a pro now, as a pro. You know what the dangerous thing is? If you don't do number four, I'm going to tell you the most dangerous thing that will happen to you. You're going to be, like I mentioned originally, idle at home, 1 Timothy chapter 5, all alone. And when you sit down and do nothing, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. And that is the most dangerous thing that can happen. I'm just going to say this real quickly concerning Big Chuck. Big Chuck said this, is that he would always tell addicts, the most dangerous thing is that you're stuck alone in your home. Why? Because what happens is then uh, with that addiction running wild, not only that, you eventually commit suicide. And there were people who committed suicide and those who lived right next door to Chuck. And he stressed them so many times this. You know what he told them actually as number one thing? He told them this. And you got to realize this. There wasn't really a Bible-believing church out there that time, too. There were Christian churches, but they weren't really Bible-believing. But Chuck realized it's very important to do this because isolation is a dangerous thing. 